before we get to the Leafs, because the, yes. the, the Montreal Canadiens and, and Carey Price signing is so near, and the fact that they weren't able to retain uh, Radulov, uh, do, do, do the Montreal Canadiens even look close to what they thought their plan was going to look like at this point? And are they a better team now than now, they were? They're, yeah, they're hoping that uh, Jonathan Drouin is an upgrade on, on Alex Radulov. I have my... I have my doubts there. Uh, I, I like Jonathan Drouin as a hockey player. Um, I don't like him as much five-on-five five as I like Radulov. Um, Drouin's dynamic on the power play, you know, dynamic, uh, you know, when you get to the uh, get to the overtime. Um, but I, I, I still do have some concerns about him five-on-five. Five. But a highly skilled guy um, and a left winger, and he can play center as well. And I'm sure that in a perfect Montreal world, that's where they want him. But... Is Montreal a better team today than they were, you know, at the uh, at, at the end of the season? I I can't bring myself to say yes. Uh, again, we'll see what happens with Markov if he re-ups with the Montreal Canadiens. But uh, the Alsner signing was a curious one for me from Montreal because, you know, Elliot, I mean, and you've followed Montreal closely for years. At the end of the day, the, the same question uh, about Montreal is the same one that I still have. Who is going to break the puck out uh, on this defense, because as we saw, it's not going to be Shea Weber. It's not going to be Carl, Carl Alsner. Uh, if Markov is out of the equation, is Jeff Petrie your best puck moving guy now? But but what what they did is actually make it worse because who knows what Beaulieu is going to be. Uh, he certainly was a puck mover. That was something that he did uh, as well yeah. as he did anything else. Sergachev is a guy who was supposed to be the next guy to be able yes. to move the puck. You traded yes. P.K. Subban last year. Yes. Nobody can move the puck. I don't know what to say because I'm I'm bobbleheading as you're speaking. You're right. Like I'm with you, Elliot, on this one, 100. percent The Sergeyev one. It's interesting because you know, we all had the same questions at the end of the year. How is Montreal going to help their team and not be forced to move Sergeyev? And we heard Mark Bergevin say, "No, we're not moving Sergeyev. We're not moving Sergeyev." I get the situations change. He said the same thing about PK Subban the season before. But that's a tough one. And puck moving defensemen, as we all know, in 2017, are the most valued commodity on your roster for players that don't wear pads and gloves like waffles and mitts. It's it's so you don't let go of those guys. And perhaps outside of Charlie McAvoy, uh, who looks like a steal last year for the Boston Bruins, he was probably the best puck moving defenseman in that draft class last season. Montreal had a legit potential number one guy and they let him go for Jonathan Drouin, which is why you know I circle back to the initial point. There is a lot riding on John Drouin here because A, not only is he essentially hope, Montreal hoping that they can replace the Radulov points with Drouin points, but also, you know, they gave up a legitimate key piece of their future to get this guy. I don't think that we'll ever, you know, it's not going to be a Taylor Tyler type thing, whether you're going to measure these two guys against one another, but you can be sure that well, if, 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 um, if Sergachev has the type of success we suspect he will at the NHL level, maybe as early as next season with Tampa, that's not going to look great for the Montreal Canadiens, no matter what Jonathan Drouin does, because that's a hole that Montreal still needs to fill on the back end. I'm listening to both you guys talk about this, Jeff, and this was my original question. You give Price all that money. Is he worth it? Okay, you can debate that. Yep. I mean, but at the same time, you need money for other players. Could, could they not have convinced him, you know, look, you want to be here, we want you here. Could you take a little bit less? Could you take a mm. little bit of a hometown discount so we could get some guys to help you out? I mean, that's... To me, that's that's a, a big factor. That's what it comes the down to in terms in of Edmonton managing the cap. Is, is going to make three million more a year than Carey Price. Yeah, I, I don't I don't have a problem. I, I I know you know the age is a is a concern. Certainly, you know goaltenders now we're not seeing them get you know uh, approach forty given the, the style. It's just so taxing right now on the groin and the hips and the knees. Uh, this isn't like the uh, the Martin Brodeur days of stand up goaltenders that can play forever because their bodies don't take as much of a beating. Um, Carey Price is well. First of all, he's a freak athlete. He's the most. I still maintain he is the most most athletic goaltender in the NHL. Uh, he's the strongest to push off into position. Um, he's he is the ultimate duck underwater. All cool on top and underneath. He's working like crazy to get to position. I don't have a problem with paying 10.5 for Carey Price, and I may be in the minority on that one. Um, it sounds like you're not cool with that one, Jonesy. Oh, I'm just, about, I'm just uh, thinking about the rest of the team, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, no, no, and, I, and, no, I, and I, get I get it. it. I the get guy's it. worth it. I mean, Kevin Durant in a, in a different situation, a different type of money, 
took mm-hmm. less to keep the band together or to have money for improvement so they could still win and he still feels comfortable with what he's getting i and i understand players have a limited window to earn their money and and some people begrudge them and i don't because they've got to work really hard but sure if it's about winning maybe you make a little bit of a sacrifice I don't know. He's kind of the. I mean, if if you believe that he's the best goaltender in the game, and many do, how do you not compensate him as such? You know, like if if you can't win, this is what I would come back with. It's much like the Connor McDavid argument. If you can't win with a ten million dollar carry price, then shame on you. Like like really, if you can't win with a thirteen million dollar Connor McDavid because that's what he's worth, well then shame on you. Like the the problem is never going to be the big guys. The big no. guys that can perform. No. If you if if they get their money, I mean you know this, and you know ba- basketball is 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 full of these great examples. You don't get in trouble when you pay your big guys. No, nope. right? You don't pay, get in trouble when you pay your big guys that can perform. Where you get in trouble is where you start to overcompensate your support staff. That's where the problems start. So if you look at the Edmonton example, you know if this doesn't work, and we all suspect that it will. Like this is going to be a, like a legitimate Stanley Cup contender, maybe as early as next season. But if they're not, if this thing implodes, you know you don't point fingers at players like Connor McDavid. You know you look at the Milan Lucic's and the Chris Russell. You look at those deals. You don't look at the deals for the superstars because those guys are performing. Ditto for the Montreal Canadiens. If this doesn't work for Montreal, I don't think it's right to point the finger at someone like Carey Price and saying, look, he's taking all of the money. Therefore, we don't have you know any value contracts with our forwards or, or with our defensemen. Um, I don't think that that should necessarily affect the composition of your team. I, I, but, I think that if he was to be criticized, it would be unfair. But, but you only have so much money to spend. I agree with Jonesy. I mean, you look at what, what would happen to Washington over the last 48 hours. They signed Kuznetsov. They have to trade somebody. Yeah. I mean, it, it, well, that's because they went you. for it last. But that's because they went for it last yeah. year. The, sto- okay. the story of the Washington Capitals is an awful one because everything built to last season. Everything, okay, like everything that they were doing was building to last season. Um, we've seen teams at the you know approaching the top of their winning cycle, and they go for it. And Washington did. And the question is always, well, what if you go for it, and it doesn't work? Well, what then? Then what do you do? And that's what Washington is stuck with. You know, another exit at the hands of the Pittsburgh Penguins, President's Trophy, that's wonderful. But here we are, you know, bounced again early in the playoffs. And now we have to shed some skin. We knew we were going to lose players. We knew we were going to lose Alsner. We knew we were going to lose Justin Williams. Um, what was this team going to look like? And we knew the Kuznetsov contract was coming up. What does that mean for a player like Nicholas Backstrom? That's probably for another conversation. You want to hang on to whatever you can hang on to. You hang on to TJ Oshie. Is that a discount of $5.7 million? You pick up, you know, Devontae Smith Pelly to try to fill some holes on a very bargain and a very reasonable contract. You still have a deal to do with Andre Burakovsky. But we all knew this was coming for Washington. This was the gamble. They went for it. This thing has been building since. Well, really, they started in 2010 when everyone was expecting them to steamroll the Montreal Canadiens. And all of a sudden, you know, it was Mike Camilleri and it was Yaroslav Halak and Kirk Muller drawing it up on the bench and they stunned him. Everything was building to last season and it didn't work. And now, you know, you had, you know, Dan Schulman on uh, last hour and he was talking about, you know, you either pay me now or you pay me later. Well, we all knew this was coming and now it's Washington's turn.